got inside the program. We're the only people in the world that actually got inside of that program. When you, say you, got, by, when you say you got inside that program? The uh, aerosol program, the chemtrail program. You're talking about information on the inside of this program. I'm talking about actually getting inside the program at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base where it's being managed. Wow. And we actually got into some of the people that were were dissatisfied from within the program and they divulged a lot of the acronyms and the purpose of the program and so on. And that's the the only way that um, anybody could ever have uh, broken the uh, the secrecy of this program. Okay. We know that people have died over this program. People have been hit to keep them quiet. And we know that other things have happened to keep people in this program. One of the key people that designed the aerosol, the barium salt aerosol, was set up by people in the Reagan administration, and he's now sitting in federal penitentiary. They still go to him to ask him questions, but yet he is uh, in the prison. Uh, that is a little unnerving, isn't it? Yes, it is, absolutely. That the man that designed the barium salt aerosol is sitting in a prison. Well, it would sort of make sense. Now, I, before we go any further, let's just define what you believe to be the, the, the aerosol crime issue. I mean, just what is this aerosol that we're discussing? I mean, it comes out of aircraft, we believe, uh, or we know, and that is the basis of a program that is set up to not do good to this country, but probably do harm. Now, I remember we had a couple of people on the program recently. You contacted me after that, and you said, Joyce, some of, these, some of the information was accurate, some of it was inaccurate. But what we do know is there's something in the skies that should not be there. The uh, white trail is not coming out of the engines. It's coming out of aerosol units on the aircraft. In the very beginning, the early days, the aircraft uh, were flying relatively low, 10,000 feet or below, and they were developing, uh, developing the program. They were mostly contract aircraft, mostly CIA aircraft. Now the program has been expanded and commercial airliners, airliners have been outfitted with uh, aerosol units that are controlled through computer systems and satellites to dispense a barium salt mixture. It's a mixture of barium salt, not coming out of the engine. It's coming out of aerosols. And we have checked on information. We do confirm that the name of the project is Project Cloverleaf in the aircraft industry. It is very secretive. It is the most secretive thing I have ever encountered. People have died over this, talking about it. I listened to the uh, uh, your broadcast just a few minutes ago. The general was on, saying that uh, he is very patriotic and uh, he is uh, he feels compelled to speak out, and that's exactly the same way I feel. I am very patriotic. I was born before the Second World War. I'm an old guy, and I come from that generation and that mindset. This is my country, and I see my country being dissolved. My country is being destroyed right in front of my eyes. And the people are being hurt. And that's why I consented to be on your radio program today. I know uh, you will remember that you've asked me many times to, uh, to do this, and I've been very reluctant. But uh, it's time. It's time to speak out and go public with these things. Well, that is correct. I have asked uh, AC to be on this program many, many times. And uh, you do this, I think, with a considerable amount of uh, risk to your own life, do you not? Yes, that's right. So that's there. Right. There are people who have lost their lives, people who are now in prison as a result of divulging this information. Um, now, you were, as you say, very patriotic. You still are very patriotic, and you were doing this out of patriotism, out of love for your country. As I know you are. That's correct. That's correct. You know, Joyce, I'm in uh, Richmond, Virginia, just a few miles from the spot that Patrick Henry stood in 1775. He was talking to Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, George Wythe, and, and others in St. John's Church. And they were talking about the oppression coming from England at the time. And he was a little uh, uh, put out at them for not deciding uh, a course. And he concluded his speech to them with, I know not what course others may choose, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. 
And I think we're approaching a time like that. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Oh, absolutely. There's no question in my mind. I, uh, I talked with you about a discussion I had had with a military member who admitted to me, well, first of all, he did not believe that there was such a program. However, he was stationed at one of the bases where I knew some of the operations were taking place on this aerosol uh, clouding or, or aerosol dispersion or whatever you want to call it. And I had him go to the person who we knew was in charge at that base at that time. And he did, in fact, confirm that the person that uh, admitted to some of the information that we're about to talk about here or that some of the information regarding this program. And he was so disillusioned when I talked with his military officer. He said, I am leaving the military, Joyce. I did not believe you when you told me about Gulf War illness. And then he said, I became ill. Then I found out the doxycycline was true. And then now I have found out about this spraying issue. And he said, I can no longer serve the military. Admiral Jeremiah Border. He was the chief of naval operations. He was a Jewish man. He um, enlisted in the Navy when he was 17 years old, stayed an enlisted man for six years, and then went up in the ranks to become the number one naval officer for the United States Navy. He was chief of naval operations. Well, unexpectedly one night he decided to suicide himself in his house, and he shot himself twice in the chest with a shotgun. That's a, quite a feat. Yes, it is. Now, he was the chief of naval operations, and he opposed the chemtrail project. Uh -huh. Then the chemtrail project started after Admiral Borda was replaced. Jeremiah Borda. He was a dedicated man. He was a sincere, a sincere man. He was a good man. So you're seeing a picture of how this thing operates. Um, the, um, the CIA finances um, projects with with monies uh, earned elsewhere. The monies that go into CIA projects don't necessarily come out of uh, congressional appropriations. And I will tell you that the Congress as a whole is completely oblivious to the aerosol program. They are afraid to ask. I had an interview uh, meeting, rather, with the administrative aide of a congressman. He drove all the way to Richmond from Washington to meet with me. We spent about an hour. I gave him a complete overview presentation he looked at me, stood up, and he said, what do you expect me to do, Griff? They would lie to me, too. Well, that wow. was his exact words. And I shook wow. his hand and hugged the secretary and left. And that was it. Uh, that, that tells me that the Congress, um, I know for a fact the Congress is out of the loop. It's not that simple, Joyce. It's a, it's a very complicated thing. You must know the people. You must know what they're capable of. You must know their their operation, their intent, you must realize that you're dealing with people with no faces that haven't been elected. You don't know who they are, you don't know what they're putting in those aircraft. Uh, the security on the substance going into the, into the um, aircraft, there's very little security on that. Whatever, they, whatever somebody puts in the aircraft is going to come out of the aircraft. That's a real concern. The Environmental Protection Agency has been told to, to keep their nose out of it on the state levels. The state, various, uh, here in Virginia, it's the Department of Environmental Quality. They've been, I was told by high people in that, that they were told to leave it alone. Don't look at it. Don't look at the air quality uh, when it comes to the aerosols. Look at, uh, uh, talk about ozone levels and things like that. Well, you mentioned that you had talked to one congressman, and then you men mentioned uh, Sen uh, Representative Kucinich as we were going to the break. Yes, he, he introduced um, uh, H.R. 2799, I believe that was it, and it was um, he was called aside and told to take it out, and he did, and he got very quiet about it. I can't tell you, I can't tell you enough that this is a very dangerous thing to uh, to get into. Um, it's very dangerous to talk about this. As long as people talk about the the normal stuff on the internet, um, they they're okay. Um, the agencies have been told to leave this alone. Now, uh, as in the Watergate and some of these other projects that I mentioned, everybody involved thought they were doing it for some reason, some different reason. They didn't know what it was about. Everybody was going in different directions, and that's the same thing we find here in the, in the aerosol program. The uh, pilots probably don't know what they're doing. The crews that put it in, they have no idea what it was for. We believe that it was sold to governments as global warming, uh, fix. We believe that, but it wasn't. Here's what it was about. It was about a sub-program, making a sub-program in a Navy program 
called the Variable Terrain Radio Parabolic Equation, VTRPE, Function Over Land Terrain. That's what it's about. Hmm. That's, that is what it's about. You've heard all kinds of explanations for seven or eight years, but it's for the VTRPE. Why don't you and repeat? it's part of the Radio Frequency Mission Planner. It's a system. It's a computer system. RFMP, Radio Frequency Mission Planner, and the VTRPE programs are a sub-program within that system. And it was first put on the Enterprise and aircraft carriers for battlefield imaging. The, the system would not work over land terrain adequately, or accurately rather, without creating a, a ducting of radio waves over land terrain, and they used the mixture of barium salt to do that. And that enables the whole system to function. It is the system that the United States uses in Afghanistan and Iraq and probably will use in Iran and some of the other applications. And that's what it's about. It's about the VTRPE. Um, I see we're running out of time, and there's several things that I've just got to mention to you. Now, within, within the, the Navy program, we see DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, and they're into biologicals, and that's where Clifford um, shines. He has identified many, many uh, very harmful uh, biologicals coming out of the aerosols. And, of course, we, you're speaking of Clifford Carnicom. Just Clifford so Carnicom, yes. Aware. And that's Carnicom.com. That's C-A-R-N-I-C-O-M.com. We have the greatest admiration for Clifford, and we have admiration for uh, for Scott the weatherman, too, Scott Stevens. He's... Uh, He's a man of conviction. We admire him for that. Yes. So uh, DARPA is involved, and DARPA is involved in spraying cities. We caught them spraying Asheville, North Carolina, several years ago with a substance called BCTP, developed under one of their contracts at the University of Michigan, and it's an anti-anthrax. So um, that was one of the first that, that we saw coming out of the aircraft. They brought them in and sprayed the city. Uh, strange, Art Bell's mother lived in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and he talked about it on the uh, air, although um, he didn't fully understand it. We are in a desperate time, and people are oblivious to it. Well, I'm afraid that you're right on the oblivious part because uh, people cannot believe that this country would do that because of the facade of, oh, we care about your freedom and we're there for you and uh, we want to provide the most strong military to protect you. And they hate freedom and that's why they're after us. And all these phony, phony things that we have been fed. But, you know, uh, there is a paper that was done, and I, I really appreciate uh, receiving this. It was a thesis by uh, Matthew Doggett that, as I understand, is not on the Internet about the, uh, uh, the documentation behind what you're talking about here with respect to this project. And I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, it's called An Atmospheric Sensitivity and Validation Study of the Variable Terrain Radio Parabolic Equation Model, or the VTRPE, as A.C. Griffith was just discussing. Now, can you just help us understand, that's a, that's a big title, Atmospheric Sensitivity and Validation Study of the Variable Terrain Radio Parabolic Equation Model. What is, sir, and, and, and I have to, excuse me for asking this, but what is VTRPE? It is a sub-program, a computer program within the Radio Frequency Mission Planner system that's key to battlefield operations. It is key. We cannot fight wars without that. We've come to that. As uh, in World War II, you put a man in the field with a gun and, and say, go shoot him, you know. But today's military operates uh, by a satellite and ground radar. So this system ties into satellite radar and ground radar, and that VTRPE can paint a three-dimension battlefield image over land terrain from a ship 200 miles in the Atlantic or the Pacific. All right, so you say originally it was done to get this three-dimensional battlefield imaging.